Welcome to Facts for Real Videos. Here is the fourth installment of our list of the most expensive building blunders ever, which includes skyscraper windows falling out and terrible engineering errors that caused deadly bridge collapses. We begin with number four, the terrible collapse of the Mississippi Bridge. The most disastrous instances of infrastructure failure might occur when a bridge falls. They frequently occur as a result of poor engineering, poor construction, or poor maintenance. In this instance, the catastrophe was likely greatly influenced by both causes. After 40 years of use, the so-called I-35W Mississippi River Bridge collapsed into the Mississippi on August 1, 2007. 18 construction workers and more than 100 cars all fell 40 meters into the river. The tragedy, which is still one of Minnesota's worst catastrophes, left 145 people injured and 13 dead. The center span of the bridge was the first part of the bridge to fall, and then other parts of the bridge soon followed. Many problems with the bridge were revealed in the wake of the disaster. The eight-lane construction was already considered structurally weak, which meant that it needed urgent repairs. The bridge could still have survived, it was discovered, if not for one other significant design error. It was discovered that the fitted gusset plates, which connect various bridge beams and sections, were only half as thick as necessary. The examination also revealed that there was roughly 300 tons of building machinery on the bridge when it collapsed. The structure was further stretched as a result of this and the rush hour traffic, and the frail gusset plates could no longer keep the bridge together. Numerous lawsuits were filed in response to the investigation's findings, and $52 million was given to the bridge collapse victims. The Minnesota legislature funded $2.5 billion for a program to upgrade bridges in order to ensure that this sad accident doesn't occur to future bridges. Out of that sum, over $250 million was set aside for contracts to restore the bridge. What do you think so far about this video? Number 3, the building that almost resulted in a disaster, the AON Center, which was built in the 1970s for about $120 million, was the highest structure in Chicago. The 346-meter height was impressive at the time, but it wasn't the only thing. The AON Center also had a distinctive appearance due to its exterior, which was made of Italian marble slabs. Later on though, this special marble turned out to be a very expensive and risky blunder. It was quickly discovered that the marble slabs were too thin and immediately began to shatter after being fastened to the facade. One of the unsteady marble stones in the tower's facade came loose and fell to the ground only a few weeks after it was first erected. The falling block struck the roof of an adjacent tower and weighed roughly 160 kilos, or the equivalent of a fully grown lion. Fortunately, nobody was hurt because it missed the roadway. The tower's structural stability was called into question. The architects emphasized that the issue solely pertained to the facade, which they had secured to stop additional blocks from collapsing. The thin marble slabs began to break and bow outward once more over the course of the following several years as a result of the temperature changes in Chicago. To prevent the blocks from collapsing, they opted to affix steel straps in 1985. But it turned out that this was simply a short-term fix. The entire external cladding needed to be refaced five years later. At a cost of $80 million, or nearly a quarter of the total cost of the building when adjusted for inflation, the marble slabs were replaced with much thicker granite panels. However, the AON Center wasn't the first 1970s-era tower that saw things crashing through its exterior. Other structures, such as the a year earlier finished CNA Center in Chicago, were experiencing similar issues. Due to heat expansion, the CNA Center's windows began to fracture, endangering the people below. But in 1999, a terrible incident happened. A 37-year-old lady was killed when a window on the 29th floor cracked. Following the horrible tragedy, a lawsuit was filed, which resulted in a settlement of $18 million and the replacement of all of the building's windows. The windows of the renowned John Hancock Tower began to fracture as a result of thermal expansion in a 1976-built skyscraper in Boston. A few of the windows broke, crashing to the ground. Because of this, during strong gusts, the streets near the high-rise were shut down. 
In order to solve the issue, more than 10,000 windows had to be replaced. Number two, to prevent the blocks from collapsing, they opted to affix steel straps in 1985. But it turned out that this was simply a short-term fix. The entire external cladding needed to be refaced five years later. At a cost of $80 million, or nearly a quarter of the total cost of the building when adjusted for inflation, the marble slabs were replaced with much thicker granite panels. However, the AON Center wasn't the first 1970s-era tower that saw things crashing through its exterior. Other structures, such the a year earlier finished CNA Center in Chicago, were experiencing similar issues. Due to heat expansion, the CNA Center's windows began to fracture, endangering the people below. But in 1999, a terrible incident happened. A 37-year-old lady was killed when a window on the 29th floor cracked. Following the horrible tragedy, a lawsuit was filed, which resulted in a settlement of $18 million and the replacement of all of the building's windows. The windows of the renowned John Hancock Tower began to fracture as a result of thermal expansion in a 1976-built skyscraper in Boston. A few of the windows broke, crashing to the ground. Because of this, during strong gusts, the streets near the high-rise were shut down. In order to solve the issue, more than 10,000 windows had to be replaced. To prevent the blocks from collapsing, they opted to affix steel straps in 1985. But it turned out that this was simply a short-term fix. The entire external cladding needed to be refaced five years later. At a cost of $80 million, or nearly a quarter of the total cost of the building when adjusted for inflation, the marble slabs were replaced with much thicker granite panels. However, the AON Center wasn't the first 1970s-era tower that saw things crashing through its exterior. Other structures, such the a year earlier finished CNA Center in Chicago, were experiencing similar issues. Due to heat expansion, the CNA Center's windows began to fracture, endangering the people below. But in 1999, a terrible incident happened. A 37-year-old lady was killed when a window on the 29th floor cracked. Following the horrible tragedy, a lawsuit was filed, which resulted in a settlement of $18 million and the replacement of all of the building's windows. The windows of the renowned John Hancock Tower began to fracture as a result of thermal expansion in a 1976-built skyscraper in Boston. A few of the windows broke, crashing to the ground. Because of this, during strong gusts, the streets near the high-rise were shut down. In order to solve the issue, more than 10,000 windows had to be replaced. And things continue to worsen than first anticipated. A San Francisco grand jury revealed in 2022 that the shipyard would have a new issue. Because of the rising groundwater due to climate change, previous cleanup efforts might no longer be effective. The presumption behind previous tactics was that the dry parts of the shipyard would remain dry. However, the potential exists for dormant pollutants in the soil to become mobile due to rising groundwater. The project will be significantly delayed overall. By 2020, the majority of the housing units at the former shipyard were planned to be handed over to homeowners. Most of these moves won't take place, though, until at least 2026. For the time being, the project's future is uncertain, and the cleanup errors mean that at least a billion dollars of its budget was wasted. We examine one of the most tragic bridge collapses in the history of the globe for the final assignment in this video. Number 1. The Terrible Bridge Disaster in South Korea The Siansu Bridge, erected in 1977, across the Han River to link the capital city of South Korea's Songdong and Gangnam neighborhoods. The Siansu Bridge's collapse on October 21, 1994, was one of the worst disasters in Seoul's history as a result of persistent overloading. Between the fifth and sixth legs of the bridge, a full slab collapsed and fell more than 50 meters to the water. The bus, a van, and a single automobile were in the center of the slab as it fell. In addition, a few vehicles plunged off the cliff and into the river. 29 of the 32 fatalities in this tragedy were bus passengers. It was decided to launch an investigation to determine how this might have happened. The bridge was initially intended for trucks weighing less than 36 tons. 
However, as Seoul's urban growth accelerated over time, traffic grew and loads more than 47 tons per truck were permitted. The suspension structure's steel trusses unfinished welding was revealed to be the main contributing factor. The bridge's general condition was failing, and the supports had started to corrode. Additionally, despite numerous warnings, the structure wasn't properly maintained. Together, these causes led to this devastating collapse. Seven city employees who were in charge of maintaining the bridge were detained following the incident. The city mayor was compelled to resign in the meanwhile. Although the Siansu Bridge collapse was the largest in Seoul, it wasn't the first bridge collapse tragedy to occur in South Korea. Since the 1970s, there have been at least eight similar collapses, including three on the Han River. The government began an urgent inspection campaign for bridges across South Korea as a result of intense public demand. A proposal to fix the Siansu Bridge was implemented in the interim. However, it soon became apparent that the damage could not be repaired due to the structural flaws. Eventually, the bridge needed to be destroyed and reconstructed. Three years after the original bridge collapsed, a replacement bridge was built, keeping as much of the original bridge's appearance as feasible. However, citizens of Seoul continue to recall the awful morning in 1994. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you thought it was interesting. Check out the other videos in our series on building blunders for additional information.